Oh, hey, remember a few videos ago where I showed you guys that I bought a house in Central Oregon? It's a little cabin in the woods. It was pretty expensive and it's hideous on the inside because it was built in 1976 and well, it hasn't had anything done to it since 1976. So I know it's been a while, but we're gonna head over there this week and we're gonna start ripping the entire thing apart. It's not much to this video than that. Demo. So let's go over there and start ripping. Maybe I should wait till I get over there. year was 1976. Jimmy Carter defeats the incumbent president Gerald Ford to win the presidency. Apple Computers and Microsoft both become companies. VHS was released and Elton John does a hit single with Kiki D. Don't go breaking my heart. Oh yeah, and also this ugly house was built with all the wonderful finishings you're looking at right now. But that's all about to change because today my friends is demo day. So let's rip this thing apart. Now the very first thing I wanted to start tearing into was this silly wall divider. It divided the room off, it lowered the ceiling height, and I have no clue why this thing was put here to begin with. So I climbed up on a ladder all by my lonesome and I started tearing into it. Now I already did a little exploratory endeavor into this wall divider when I did the house tour and I found insulation, which I always thought was funny on an interior wall. Then when I started ripping off the drywall, I found something else that was highly suspicious. On the other side, underneath the drywall was half inch exterior grade plywood. Curiouser and curiouser. I started trying to pound it off with this little mini sledgehammer and that didn't go so well. And by that I mean it didn't move at all. So when in doubt, grab a bigger hammer or in this case, a splitting mall, because it's all I had laying around. But unfortunately, that did just about as much as the mini sledge. So I gave up on that and decided to go to the other side and rip the drywall off first. I thought maybe this would loosen up that half inch ply, and that's when I discovered that that corner has metal flashing in it, which not only is a pain because it's holding the half inch ply in place, it also leads me to believe that this was definitely an exterior wall at some point. What the heck is going on in this house? But I wasn't sent here to question, I was sent here to destroy. So that's exactly what I did. Eventually, with a little blood, sweat, and tears, I was able to rip down that exterior half-inch plywood, just like so. And finally, I could see the bones of the beast. All right, now I knew as I was going through this house, I was gonna find some weird stuff. And this little divider wall has always thrown me for a loop and I never really understood why it was here. I thought it was strange that when I ripped into it from the other side originally, I found insulation. Because why in the world would you insulate a divider in between two rooms that's completely open on the bottom? That doesn't make a lot of sense. And then as I started tearing this wall apart, it was weird that there was drywall on one side and there was half inch ply on the other side, like you would do on an exterior wall. So with the half inch ply, plus the fact that it was insulated, and then in the corner here, I found metal flashing in the corner, like you would do on the exterior of a house. The only thing I could come to think is that this section of the house used to be outdoors, which I don't really understand how that works exactly. I don't know if the house just stopped there or maybe this was a covered porch on the outside and then they closed this in. I just can't think for the life of me any other reason why there would be plywood on one side, the wall would be insulated, and there'd be flashing in the corner. I would wager to bet that there's plywood on this wall too, because I'm guessing that was exterior as well. Very strange. So, if this was an exterior wall, this giant beam, I'm guessing, would have been a header for a sliding glass door package. Maybe. 
that's probably also why it's so low because it's roughly door height. I don't know. The real question is, can we take it out? Let me give you a little piece of advice. If you're demoing a house and you ever run into the question, can we take this out? The answer is always going to be yes. The real question is, is it a good idea? Now I wasn't sure in this case, so I started doing it slowly and I started doing it carefully. And the best way to do that is to remove all of the vertical supports one by one. And when you get to the last one, cut it with a sawzall. If the blade pinches, well, it's probably structural and you should put some braces back in. If it doesn't, like it didn't here, then you're probably good. All right, the mystery of the beam. We still don't know exactly what the story behind this is. We know this was an exterior wall at one point because of everything I talked about earlier. The way we tested to make sure it wasn't load bearing is we just started taking um, these vertical braces down one by one until we got to the last one. I cut it with the Sawzall to see if it pinched the blade a ton. It pinched just the slightest. I mean, I could wiggle it around by hand, so we were pretty convinced there wasn't a load down on this. Hit that last one out, and the roof is still standing. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might be saying, yeah, but this beam is probably a collar tie. It's probably holding things together this way. But examining this beam, it's literally held into each side with one nail. It's really just resting on supports from down below. So it's not a collar tie. If I had to guess, it was a header for a sliding glass door at one point and a very over-engineered header at that. So we're gonna get rid of it. Wish us luck. At this point, my friend Casey had come to help me out with the demo and we stuck our heads together and figured out the safest way to take down this giant beam. We basically took some scrap wood and screwed it on either side of the beam. One piece of scrap on the left and one on the right. Then we braced it up from the bottom with a few wedged two by fours. Now the plan was to cut it right down the middle. I started on one side with a skill saw cutting about halfway through, zip, zap, zoop. If this falls down, I might just poop. At least that was the internal monologue that was going on in my head. I cut through half of it fairly easily, and then I continued the cut from the other side with the sawzall, very cautiously and very carefully, listening and watching for any creaks or moan that the house might make, which didn't make any because I'm pretty sure that beam wasn't doing a single thing. Then all we had to do was cut the nails on either side. There was only one on each side, so that wasn't too difficult. And the beam, for all practical purposes, was free. Then Craig, Casey, and I just slowly lowered it to the ground. And believe it or not, the house did not complain. And by that, I mean the house didn't come crashing down, killing us all. Which was a good thing. With one half of the beam gone, all we had to do was the exact same thing to the other half. And just like that, this room was opened up and looked humongous, the way it should have been from the very beginning. Now, I didn't know how this beam was hooked to that exterior wall, so we cut it free instead of just ripped it out. And once I got rid of that last remaining bit, I realized there used to be a beam here matching the other ones all along, and for some reason, they just cut it off. So we're going to put it back the way it was originally. After removing that beam, it was on to the kitchen, which I was really excited about because, come on, Southwest themed wallpaper borders in Oregon? Really? We really started just pulling and smashing and cracking and banging and shoving and... Did I say pulling already? these cabinets apart. Now this island did have a little power in it, but I noticed that before we started ripping it out, killed the power and cut it off at the source. Then one by one, we started hauling out these appliances, which definitely weren't original to the house. They're more of the early 2000s era. Well, except for this garbage compactor. That's definitely original. At what point did we think it was a good idea to compact our garbage so we could leave it in our house longer? I want to get that stuff out as quickly as possible. While Casey worked on disconnecting the sink, I removed these upper shelves very carefully, so not to bonk him in the noggin. And then we just started smashing. Now, Casey actually wasn't able to disconnect the sink because the valve was broken and we couldn't shut off the water. So instead of wasting a bunch of time trying to figure that out, I decided just to 
break the cabinets apart around it, and leave it for the plumber. We also decided to get rid of this little pantry closet, and eventually that will be where we locate the refrigerator. So with the sink in place, for fear of flooding the cabin, we just started smashing all the cabinets around it, and then eventually moved on to the tile. Between me, Casey, and Craig, we actually got the tile removed fairly quickly. Thankfully, it was laid on top of cement boards, so it came up without too much effort, albeit in tiny little pieces. I also found three tennis balls that I suspect belonged to a dog at one point. Poor puppy. It's probably been searching for those since 1976. Along with the weird room divider in the living room, there was also this weird divider right inside the front door. So I knew that had to go as well. And wouldn't you believe, as soon as we started taking the drywall off, we found more exterior half-inch plywood underneath. Which led me to believe that this too was also at one point an exterior wall. What kind of weird cabin did these people build? I tried beating that plywood again with the splitting mall, and I loosened it up just enough for Casey to come in and take all the credit for knocking it down. Typical Casey. Let somebody else do the work, and then get all the glory for yourself. In no time we had that little divider removed and we just couldn't help ourselves going upstairs and getting rid of this weird built-in closet unit that was screwed to the stairs. I don't know, maybe somebody lived on this loft at one point and needed a place to hold their shoulder pad filled suits. Your guess is as good as mine. After removing that one closet, we decided to go back downstairs and, well, finish up one section before we moved on to the next. And that meant ripping out this ancient carpet. Now, if you're ever going to take baseboards off and you don't want to put a hole in your drywall, a good way to do it is pound in a putty knife just like this, then insert your pry bar in between the putty knife and your baseboard and pry against the putty knife. That will protect your walls from putting that oh-so-frustrating hole right above the baseboard. Once we started getting the baseboards off, I was curious how easy it would be to rip out the carpet. Some carpet is easy, and some carpet is a pain in the butt. Lucky for us, it was almost like the carpet didn't want to be there anyways. It just came up without a fight. And the pad is the real questionable thing. Sometimes these pads are glued down, and you got to scrape every inch of it off the subfloor. But in this case, there was just a few staples. And when I mean a few, I mean... Like, just a few. And they got ripped right out when we pulled the pad up, so we didn't even have to go back and pull each staple out of the subfloor. I mean, we were looking good. I had anticipated the carpet removal being one of the bigger headaches on this project, and we had all the carpet removed from pretty much the entire downstairs in like an hour, which is pretty crazy. You will notice we were all wearing RZ masks because if there's one thing I've learned about old carpet, it holds who knows what kind of nastiness underneath. I mean, there's no way to clean that stuff out. Once it's soaked into the fibers, deep into the shag, there's no getting it out. With all the doors open, it was starting to get a little chilly inside the cabin, so we lit a nice romantic fire and stood around and, well, banged some more things apart. This time, it was the cabinets in the so-called office, which will eventually become a bedroom. This is actually pretty fun. I grabbed that splitting mall, harnessed my inner rage monster, and went to town. I've often thought that when people are struggling with sadness, depression, anxiety, all they really need to do is a little home demo. There is something very therapeutic about destroying things. In no time, we had both the downstairs bedrooms done, all the carpet removed, the kitchen cleaned out, and everything hauled outside and thrown in the dumpster. When I ordered the dumpster, I had them deliver the biggest one that they had available. And I thought for sure that would be big enough to hold the contents of the entire home. I mean, it's not a very big house. But at the end of day one, it was almost full. So we played a little game of trying to hit Craig with scrap pieces of wood which, unfortunately, we were successful at. Sorry, Craig. It was the end of day one, our backs were sore, our arms were tired, and I was remembering just how hard demo actually is. But with guns like these, well, it's still really hard. Hey, this video is sponsored by AG1. 
Now, AG1 is a daily foundational nutritional supplement that helps support whole body health. Supporting your health, especially during cold weather season, can be complex. Managing stress, supporting cognition, dealing with all your gut health. The thing I love about AG1 is it not only supports your immune system, but it also supports your brain and your gut. And they make it so simple to add into your daily routine. Take a water bottle with eight to 12 ounces of water, take a scoop of the good stuff, dump it in there like that, screw the lid on, give it a little shimmy, 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 shimmy shake. Oh, I almost forgot. During cold weather season, I also like to add in a few drops of their vitamin D3 plus K2, which is immune supporting. Not only is AG1 so simple to add into my daily routine, it actually tastes good. I would buy this off of the shelf at the store if they sold it, it's that good. I used to constantly be reading articles online, trying to figure out the right supplements to take. You gotta take vitamins and minerals and all this stuff, adaptogens. And then I found AG1 and it's all in there. So if you'd like to try AG1 for yourself, just go to drinkag1.com slash bourbon moth and you're gonna get a free welcome packet that includes a canister, the shaker, a year supply, the vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packets. So just go to drinkag1.com slash bourbon moth, sign up or click the link down in the video description. Huge thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Now back to the show. Video, instructional, whatever you wanna call it. All right, we're on demo day two. We got so much done yesterday. We got this wall divider out up here. That turned out to be absolutely nothing. I think it was part of an exterior wall and it was a header for some doors. It wasn't structural. Very confident about that. Really opens up the space. We got all the carpet up. We got the flooring gone. Kitchen is all ripped out over here, which is really nice. And now we've moved on to the bedrooms, the primary bedroom, and we're gonna start on the bathrooms which are always so much fun because you rip out some tile and then you find some linoleum and then you rip out some linoleum and then you find some carpet and then you rip out the carpet and you find Jimmy Hoffa. It's just a whole ordeal. We got the showers out of there too. So we're gonna get to work and I'll check back in with you at the end of the day. Before we could get to the bathrooms, unfortunately there was a little more carpet to deal with down the hallway. But fortunately, just like the carpet and the rest of the downstairs, it came up super easy. The one spot I was very curious about was the carpet right in front of this shower that did not have a lip on it. I expected to find all kinds of nastiness buried under there, when in reality I just found some dirt and some really old black linoleum that also came up pretty easy. So I ripped out the sink, threw it out in the dumpster, pulled down the mirror, carried it outside and tried to shine Craig in the eyes with the reflection of the sun, which again I was successful at. Sorry Craig. And then I chucked that mirror in the dumpster. I know what you're thinking, that's bad luck, but it didn't break, so whoo -hoo, we're good. One thing I did find in the primary bathroom was this cool flexible copper plumbing. Oh, that's a nice feature. Pretty advanced for the 70s. Next, we removed the toilet, which definitely was not original. And I shoved a bunch of plastic down the sewer pipe because, you know, stinky poop. Then I moved into the primary walk-in closet to remove these very well-constructed cabinets that practically fell apart in my hands while I was trying to remove them. They were just hooked on the wall with this weird French cleat system, so you really just had to lift them up and then they just kind of disintegrated. That's Ikea for you. Ikea, we make closet units as soft as our meatballs. That's actually a pretty good slogan, Ikea, if you're listening. That one's for free. While I was busy working on the primary bedroom, Casey and our friend Jeff, who had showed up to help, were busy working on the laundry room. Now the laundry room had all sorts of stuff going on, which I thought was a total waste of space. So the first thing they did was rip out this mud sink counter unit, which was probably the best thing in the entire room. And then after that, got to work on removing the faucet and attic loft closet areas. Why did people put these soffits in rooms? I just don't understand. I mean, if you were covering some ducting, maybe I would understand. You gotta hide those air vents but there was literally nothing inside that soffit. It was empty. So with Casey banging away on unnecessary bump outs, 
I was determined to remove this shower. Now I expected this to be a royal pain, but lucky for me, it's the type of shower unit that gets installed in three separate panels. So once I found the screws and unscrewed them, it literally came right out. Almost scary how easy it came out. I don't think it was held in there very well to begin with. And before long, I managed to get all three walls out and that bottom little tray thing you see popped right up. Now they had built this wall out in a really weird way to fit the shower unit in. So naturally, as soon as we got the shower unit out, the next thing we did was rip out that unnecessary wall. And with that, it wasn't even noon on day two and we already had our first dumpster completely filled up. So we ordered another one, but it wasn't gonna be here till the next day. So in the meantime, we just had to pile everything up in the driveway. With the primary bathroom done, I moved on to the collective community bathroom. I don't know, what do you call a bathroom that's not hooked to a room? I'm going with community bath. This one was pretty simple. I mean, it had this weird built-in cabinet unit and the vanity, but I was able to shut the water off this time and rip the vanity out completely. And then I started working on removing the fiberglass insert. Again, I didn't have the right tools, nor did I want to mess with the plumbing, so I just cut around all the valves, and then I started using a sawzall to cut the unit in half to make it easier to remove. Now, I was being very careful to make a shallow cut, because in an old house like this, you never know what is on the other side of that fiberglass. With these units, there's also this little flange around the outside that gets buried under the drywall. So once you cut the drywall out, you can remove the nails holding the fiberglass insert in place, and it's usually pretty easy to rip it out, especially once you cut it in half. Only in this case, once I got half of it removed, I discovered something absolutely horrifying. On the other side of the insert was all manner of electrical wiring, 120, 220, the house ground, things I'd never even seen before. How I didn't hit those with the Sawzall, I have absolutely no clue. But I could have died, people. And that's no joke. It was shocking. <laughs> See, that was actually a joke, because it was electrical wires. While I got the two downstairs bathrooms squared away, Casey got everything removed from that laundry room, and now that room was huge. And then it was finally time to move upstairs. Now upstairs, there was just one small bathroom, which didn't take long for us to rip out the world's smallest vanity, and then move on to the shower system. This time, fortunately, there were no electrical wires dangling precariously behind the shower. Then we removed the toilet and the tile. Around this time, the weather decided to do a little U-turn and go from clear and sunny to, well, snow. So that should be real fun moving forward. Also around that time, a nice gentleman from Portland Millworks showed up to measure all the doors and windows. Portland Millworks is, well, a Portland-based company. They do some awesome work making doors and carry a large selection of windows and accoutrement. So I'm really excited to have them helping out on the project. After they were gone, it was back upstairs to remove more carpet and we decided last minute that we really didn't like the sarcophagus in the middle of the room and we were gonna rip it apart. Now this will mean slightly lowering the ceiling in the primary bedroom, but I'd rather have a lower ceiling in the primary bedroom than a really awkward box upstairs. So all in all, I think this is probably a good decision. And the good news is that as we carried all those scraps outside, it had snowed a lot more. So yeah, that was, that was fun and wet, but it did make the dumpster look very, very pretty. So there is that. And just like that, we had demoed about everything we could demo. We ripped the last little bit of carpet off the floors upstairs, picked up our mess, and things were starting to look quite different than when we arrived. I mean, the entryway doesn't look that much different. There's just no carpet. And if you're wondering why I didn't rip the carpet off the stairs, it's because don't worry, I'll be rebuilding those post haste. But the bathrooms were all cleaned out and gutted. Yes, we will be rerunning all that electrical, don't worry. And this room, the front room, is probably what saw the biggest transformation. It used to be closed off, it had weird yellow shelves above the window, 
and a matching yellow mantle? What? But with all that gone, the room really started to open up, and I could finally start to see the potential in this space. I can't wait to get the flooring in, get everything painted, get that one beam replaced so it matches, and start making this space livable again. Things always have to get worse before they get better when it comes to demo. But it's called demo. I mean, you are demolishing things. That's kind of in the name. And then once you demolish them, you get the fun of building them back up. And that's what I'm really excited about on this project. Now we finally have a clean slate. And hopefully you'll follow along in the coming weeks and months as we put this thing back together and make it something truly special. And not just for us. This place is going to be available to rent for you, the viewers. So if you're ever in Oregon and you want to come stay, well, you'll actually have to go on Airbnb and book it all through there. I mean, don't think you're just going to call me up on the phone and be like, yo, Jason, can I come stay? Because I'll probably be like, who is this? And then I might hang up on you. Not because I'm a mean guy, just because I don't usually answer calls from people I don't know. So, well, sometimes I do, but usually it's just to kind of play with them, like the telemarketers, you know. I just won't let them get a word in. I'll ask them a bunch of questions so they can't ask me any questions, and it's kind of a fun hobby. But I probably wouldn't do that to you. I just, well, I probably wouldn't answer. So just wait until it's on Airbnb, and then you can book it through there. But that's going to be a while. Because, yes, we might have all the carpet ripped out and the tile and the ugly bathroom fixtures, but we've still got a long ways to go. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Well, I don't know. Did we make it better or did we make it worse? I mean, with this sort of thing, sometimes it has to get worse before it can get better. And in my opinion, even though it got worse, it's already kind of better because that house feels twice, if not three times as big as it did when we started. Ripping out all those pointless room dividers and bathrooms and showers and cabinets and all that junk. Now, the fun begins. Putting all that stuff back in there. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of the work myself, but I'm also going to be hiring out a lot of work. So, we're going to keep checking in, giving you updates on the project, where we're at, what's done, what's not. We'll probably head over there a few more times to do some various projects. Kitchen cabinets, rebuilding the stairs, trimming out the entire thing. Who knows? Bathroom vanities, maybe a water slide, gazebo, maybe another lawnmower tank. I mean, you need a lawnmower tank in the woods. I don't know, catapult, trebuchet. 